I got a how not to age recently for my birthday. It's by the good people at nutritionfacts.org and they looked at all the science on food and aging and it's changed the way I eat. Check it out. For breakfast, I still have predominantly oats or porridge if you're English, um, or a smoothie, just the same ingredients. But what I put in there has changed a bit. Not the way I sweeten it. I always use dried fruit rather than like a free sugar, which is a real bad risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. Still a bit of protein powder because I'm, you know, still doing the gym. White chocolate, white chocolate, white chocolate coconut. Where was my brain? Sounds nicer than it is, but still does the job, eh? The one big change is I'm eating a lot more strawberries now. I love strawberries, they're probably my favorite berry, but I didn't include them a lot because I thought the darker berries, you know, with more of that anthocyanin, like your blueberries, blackberries, were, and they are more antioxidant rich, but strawberries are the only decent food source of phytoxin I've learned out of the book, and that's it's senolytic, so it kills these so-called zombie cells, cells that are kind of dead, they're pumping out uh, pro-inflammatory compounds, really bad for health, advance the aging process, um, and senolytics so like get rid of them. Soy milk for more protein. Another big change is cardamom. This helps us to produce more sirtuins, which combat age-related degradation. And of course, I'm still doing good old amla powder, powdered Indian gooseberry, the most antioxidant-rich food on the planet. As always, grand flax seeds for the anti-cancer gland and omega-3. Oh, and chia seeds for even more omega-3. Make sure you mill them and then you get a lot more omega-3s for your money. I always like a little cinnamon on top as well. Oh God, no! Pre-workout, I like to do something that I used to call my death drink. I had Dr. Gregor on the channel recently and I named it my death drink and he had to mention it on another channel which was hilarious. Anyway, I was just talking to him yesterday and he has what he calls his death drink, which is like a little shot glass and he puts the turmeric and all that like nasty, everything nasty and, and just takes it down and like gets it yeah. over with for the day. Anyway, I now call it my elixir of longevity, which someone said I should do one of my um, subscribers because I'm into Dungeons and Dragons. And also that seems a lot more of a nice way to, to put it. You probably shouldn't talk about drinking death drinks. Uh, turmeric, I have a teaspoon, got some black pepper as well. That potentiates the amount of um, curcumin, what is it? Curcumin. Curcumin, yeah. The curcumin you get, we're really anti-inflammatory, really good around training. Ginger also is super anti-inflammatory, so I have a teaspoon of that. And I also use black cumin seed. I usually use powder. Um, like a teaspoon. We've only got the the oil at the minute. Um, so I just use half a teaspoon of that because that's obviously a lot more concentrated. Black cumin seed has lots of health benefits. I'm taking it mostly at the moment as an aid to fat loss. It tastes really minging. That sounds nasty. And, and it will stain your teeth, so you do want to go and wash your mouth out immediately after you've drunk this. Ah. For lunch, we're going to do an amazing salad. There's loads of little additives now with our new knowledge. Um, one thing that I'm keeping constant is keeping protein relatively high. Now, I was eating a lot more tofu than tempeh. Since reading the book, I'm eating a lot more tempeh. It's got a compound called spermidine, and spermidine is the one compound the most associated with the longest lived people. So uh, let's get more spermidine in us. <laughs> Not like that. So this particular tempeh, it's made from turtle beans. Don't worry though, no turtles were harmed in the making of this tempeh. People worry about soya. It's not a thing to be worried about, it's a bean. But you don't need to have everything like soya. It's good to eat a range of different things. So this is a good little thing to include. Now I want to cut this quite thin, don't I, Jim? Yeah. About like that? Yeah. Blah, blah. For the dressing, I'm using a tablespoon of soy sauce, a teaspoon of smoked paprika, and a teaspoon of maple syrup, just to balance out any bitterness. So this is a tempeh bacon alternative. What we found with this particular tempeh, it goes really crispy. It just seems to be so much more delicious somehow. 200 degrees Celsius, that's 400 Fahrenheit in an air fryer. 
Takes about 15 minutes, Gem. Yeah. And maybe about 20 minutes in the oven. Yeah, flip it halfway. Now we'll get some quinoa on to cook. Of course, the coloured varieties have more antioxidants. While that's all cooking, we'll knock the salad together. Got some nice Italian leaves. Just a really good mix. I like to let get lots of greens into my diet because they are so freaking health, man. Right? The most healthy green of, of all, according to one study, was watercress. Watercress. So we'll get a good bit of that in there. Now we'll get a good range of different colours in. So we'll start with a bit of kook. Whatever salad veg you enjoy, you know. You can't overeat it, just smash it all in, the more the merrier. The more health promoting compounds in your body. Peppers, of course, are extremely colorful, so we'll leverage some good old peepers. Hello? Who is it, please? Oh. What did you wake up lonely? <laughs> I thought I heard a pussycat. We'll add in some lovely radishes, give a lovely peppery flavour as well as a nice bit of uh, different colour as well. I'm going to add a lovely little sweet hint in there with a bit of apple. This is a pink lady, probably my favourite apple I'd say. Very sweet, sort of fragranced and delicious. Good old scallions or spring onions, depending on uh, where you were brought up. Of course, they have the lovely uh, allicin, which is a really good anti-cancer compound. Salad cress. Now, is this baby watercress? I feel like I should know. If anyone does know, can you please comment down below and tell me? I feel like I should know these things. The quinoa has been run under cold water and drained, so that's ready to go in now. So we'll place this uh, kind of in the middle, so you've got a bit of green all around the edges to make it look pretty. Since reading the book, we've got a lot more serious with vinegar. I'm using apple cider vinegar. So this boosts AMPK, so again, it's gonna be anti-aging. Got some Kalamata olives, of course, they're salty. So I use those sparingly, only five are going on. Just a handful of nuts per day is shown to be really health protective. Um, I've got walnuts here, which according to the book, seem to be the most anti-aging. And the really new addition, Barberies, are a GOP, G-O-P-1 agonist. Now, I've not read enough of the book yet to know what the hell that means, but Dr. Greg is saying he won't have a salad now without putting on Barbaries. So that's our new little addition. Now for the pièce de résistance. Mm. It hits the same notes as bacon, but it's more delicious. And no animals had to die screaming. Of course, we need a lovely dressing to finish off with. So we've got a tablespoon of tahini, which is just milled sesame seeds. We're also going to use the juice of half a lemon. Half a teaspoon of maple syrup, just to cut the bitterness. I use low salt, which is mostly potassium salt, so it's a lot healthier. And just a little pepper to taste as well. Bon appetito. <laughs> you need to try it. <laughs> That's all I've got to say, really. <laughs> Drinks wise, still doing the lovely matcha tea, still doing hibiscus tea. You know, these are really health promoting loads of herb teas. The new thing that I'm adding in, well, actually from today, is green coffee. But I, need, I like to have decaf, so I had to source the, the coffee beans. I've got to grind them myself. My lovely friend, Kevin, he's one of our online coaching clients currently, a uh, lovely guy over in America. He said, he's a bit of an expert on coffee, and he said that they're very hard, the green beans, because they've not been roasted. Uh, so he says probably the best bet will be a mortar and pestle, which we did already have. So we're gonna give it a go. 
So, I thought I was getting some autophagy, you know, the state of body where you're scavenging like useful bits of leftover cells that are sort of done. Um, or, you know, you're depositing the rest, like getting rid of it. So, real healthy state is kind of anti cancer. I thought I was getting that from doing um, kind of not really intermittent fasting. Well, I was eating in like a less than a 12 hour window. Um, and, and so, science said, you know, if you're having a good gap where you're not eating, you should be getting into autophagy and yeah, really anti-cancer and really beneficial. And then what I learned from Dr. Gregor is that works in rodents, but not in humans. They have a much faster metabolism. You need like three days for a human. But what was giving me some autophagy was coffee. But I was having dark roast coffee. Um, and so the compound we're after is a porogenic acid, the main antioxidant in the coffee bean. And you get about 4x as much from green coffee, which has not been roasted. Hence today's experiment, I hope it works. Well, I did about 15 minutes of uh, water and pestling, but it's nothing like we're gonna need it. So I know when I'm defeated. I had a look on um, good old YouTubes. It's there for such great learning everything you need to know. One guy said you can do it in a Vitamix. So we'll do that. So he said to put about half the water you're gonna use in the Vitamix. Whiz it up for like a couple of minutes. Ooh. Um, Gemma pointed out that apparently if you don't do this sort of a thing or just use the agitator, when you've got hot liquid, air pressure can build up and it can explode. So we thought we'd better show show that in case that's true. It smells interesting. Don't smell like uh, usual coffee, I'll tell you that. Okay, and so the reason that you save half of the water is that a lot of the beans are gonna stick to the side. So hopefully we can just sort of rinse it down. And then we'll get those beans as well. Oh yes, yeah, we're gonna treat. <laughs> I smelled that before, have you, boy? He's thinking where his lips should be. I think he likes it. <laughs> Does it have a sniff of it? Oh, it doesn't smell like anything I've ever tried. I think it smells a bit like peas. It tastes really fresh and like gr green, like you'd guess it was like a green color. Yeah, delicious. It's unusual. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dinner time. Found some yesterday tofu in the fridge, so that'll go nicely with some noodles. We've got these brown rice noodles. And we're gonna whip up a healthy hoisin sauce. You'll love it. Job one, of course, we need to chop up some veggies. So we've got a couple of different peppers. We'll also have some carrot. I don't know if this is Chinese cabbage, is it, Jim? I think so. Some kind of green uh, cabbage-y thing. Tender stem broccoli or broccolini, depending on which side of the uh, Atlantic you live in. I'm gonna have a few bean sprouts as well. Oh! I forgot the main event, mushrooms. So again, Dr. Gregor says like these are a really good source of spermidine. Different mushrooms have different amounts. I think there's some oyster in here, which are particularly good. They say woodland mushrooms, so there's a bit of a range. If you don't like mushrooms or tempeh, then actually wheat germ is the best source of spermidine. So um, yeah, just get a bit of wheat germ up ya. So we steam fry with a little water, saves you a lot of calories versus using oil and it's probably healthier, I think. Now the healthy hoisin sauce, you need 100 mils of water. The sweetness comes from two tablespoons of raisins, a garlic clove, one teaspoon of tomato puree, half a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, tablespoon of soy sauce, We've got a teaspoon of delicious Chinese five spice, half a teaspoon of ginger, teaspoon of chili flakes, tablespoon of peanut butter. Get in there. 
And another new addition from Dr. Grego's How Not To Age book, Papali or Long Pepper. It's another senolytic, so it kills those senescent zombie cells. It's also very anti-cancer, so a great um, addition to your diet. Three minutes before the end, we're gonna add the sauce into the pot. So I've made a little well with the noodles and we'll pop the veggies in the middle. I've heated some tofu up, so we'll pile that up in the middle. That'll make it look more uh, <laughs> nicely presented. For more garnish, I've got fresh raw red cabbage. Now this is a cruciferous vegetables so like the green cabbage and the broccolini or tender stem broccoli. Uh, and then my rosinase enzyme in the raw will mix with the glucoraphanin in the cooked cruciferous vegetables to make sulforaphane, which is very protective against cancer. A little bit of white sesame seeds and of course some fresh coriander. I want to try one of these funky mushrooms first. But it's possible that I've not eaten it before. Mmm. Mushrooms have such a lovely umami flavour, don't they? Yeah. Really good. Nice texture as well. This is so nice. It's kind of creamy and hot and... Oh, they're lovely. The five spice, you know, that kind of... What is the flavour? Aniseed sort of flavour, isn't it? you got to try this out, guys. If you want to optimize your health, body shape, or sports performance, check out our online coaching service. That'll be the best way to go if you want to really make sure to get the results you want. However, we also do just pure nutrition plans. We do consultations. If it's just stuff you want to chat through and sort things out more for yourself, uh, check out our website. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.